In order to configure failed request tracing, open up IS Manager and connect to your site remotely. Then head over to the failed request tracing icon. You want to make sure that failed request tracing has been enabled. And in order to do that, you should not see an alert message up here, such as you do in this case. If that's the case, contact support and ask them to turn on failed request tracing. Now that tracing has been enabled on the server, I can go back and select Add Under Actions. This will allow me to specify a tracing rule. The first option would be what kind of files do I want to trace. In my case, I'm running a PHP type application, so I'll select Custom. I type in the PHP extension. I want to monitor pages that are slow to load. So anything over three seconds will cause trace to fire off. Notice that I can also cause a trace either via status codes, such as 500 internal errors, or event severity. I want to make sure all my providers are selected. At this point, I want to collect as much information as possible. That's it. We've now created a tracing rule. For the next step of the tutorial, I want to navigate to my website and simply generate some traffic. Now you can see the site is pretty fast to navigate. The postbacks are nice and zippy. However, I have sabotaged this page, or one of these pages, to take a long time to post back. In this case, it's the login page. And as you can see, this page is taking a long time to post back. This behavior should have created a trace via IIS. In order to view that, I'm heading over to the trace folder where all the logs are being dumped. Normally, the logs are generated one folder above the WW root. But in this case, I have requested that my logs are generated under a trace folder and that that trace folder has been password protected. As you can see, I also have directory browsing enabled. And I'll head over to the W3SVC folder. And there you can see some XML output. That XML output is very hard to parse as it contains a lot of data. However, there is a style sheet that makes it nice and readable. So as you can see, this trace is telling us that page wp-login.php has taken more than three seconds to load. And this triggered off a trace to let us know that. The trace contains many details as to what's happening inside the server. But if I can't find any warning errors or timeouts from any of the modules, then it means there must be something wrong with the code for the application. At this point, I would ask the web developer to look into the code for this specific page. I would also like to note that this is a type of error we would see if the problem was web server related. If this was an ASP.NET application, we could also turn tracing on for ASP.NET. That concludes the tutorial.